Hello, I am Miss Blurst. And in this video, I'll be showing you two good starting strategies I used to win in Age of Empires 2. I love Age of Empires 2, but it can seem a little intimidating at first. So I am here to show you some fun starting strategies and that it's okay to play any game any way you want. I've been playing Age of Empires 2 on and off since I was about 11. I felt smug in Year 7 history for knowing about siege weapons and castles because of this game. But I was a weird smug kit back then, so... One of these strategies is a tried and tested method from when I was 11. But the other is more recent and a tiny bit dumb, but it's my video. I don't claim to be good at this game. This is not a tutorial video. But if you do feel inspired by it, let me know in the comments about how it went. If you are enjoying my content, why not like and subscribe? It really helps with my real life victories. Now, on to our first strategy. First up, we have... Wonderful. This strategy is a slow one. However, a good, easy-going one to get you started. Your main focus will be gathering resources rather than units, so don't feel too pressured to go on the offense just yet. This is a defensive strat rather than an aggressive one, but feel free to play any way you want. What map you choose doesn't matter. Neither does race. Good advice in game and out. Now, let's begin. The game has selected the Spanish for us. And on this map, there's lots of bamboo trees, shallow river crossings, and geese! I start my villagers off collecting resources and send my scout off to scout. My scout had a slight obsession with exploring the top right of the map, so who knows what was going on in the bottom left. I don't like using the animals we gain at the start. Those are our friends, and I like to see how long we can keep them for. I even got them some protection because the enemies kept trying to take them. We were also quite a bit exposed on our little island, so I set down some outposts. This allowed me to see that the reds were right there! The Dark Ages were uneventful, other than getting a jump start on the valuable resources needed for my overall plan, there wasn't much to do. So it was on to the Feudal Age! Feudal Age! Ah, the Feudal Age! My favourite age in Age of Empires. Some races have cute little thatched roofs, others slate or tile. Some have a European style windmill, whilst others have a water wheel. Others have this style windmill, but I don't know what this style of windmill is called, so if anybody knows, that would be great. The aesthetic of each building in this age is perfect, and I love it. I like to stay in the feudal ages for as long as possible. Aesthetic reasons mostly, but also I've learned that once the player advances, most of the AI follow suit. And the castle age, they start getting a bit more aggressive, that's scary. The bamboo deposit on our island had run out, so I sent my villagers over to another island, accompanied by one of our few militia units to protect them. I also found a relic! We needed the wood, because at some stage, after I built a bunch of guard towers, we'd run out, and I couldn't reseed a farm, and needed to kill a boar. We lost a man in the process, but his final moments were fighting a boar with two women, so I don't think he minded. His sacrifice was noble. I learnt the hard way that when you place outposts, AI take this as a declaration of war. And the Reds kept attacking it, and even destroyed it! Once destroyed, they moved onto my dock. This offended me, because I didn't attack their dock. To teach them a lesson, I've started building guard towers around them, and got to work on a wall to keep them out. Now that my outpost had declared me public enemy number one, it was time to gather enough stone to hunker down and protect myself from my angry neighbours. The stone deposit had run out on my tiny island, and the next deposit were too close to my neighbours, so my only option was to travel to an uninhabited area where I could mine in peace. 
Once stone was secured, it was time to move on to the Castle Age. Castle Age! The Castle Age is full of fun buildings and units, like obviously castles, and monasteries, and siege workshops. But the Spanish doesn't have siege workshops. But they did have conquistadors! A gun-wielding cavalry unit that could shoot through our walls, breaking the laws of physics. Don't question it. I created a bunch of them and had them patrol around the walls just for something to do. The monastery meant we could create a monk and collect the handful of relics we had discovered on our quest for resources. This would generate gold for us, for our overall plan, and if I collected them all, I could win if I held them for a hundred years, but that wasn't what the plan was this time. As I said they would, the enemies came at me once I reached the castle age, and they reached the castle age. I had completed my wall, so I wasn't worried, and began strategically placing guard towers around to stem off potential invaders. They only had beef with my guard towers and outposts, and my walls. My villagers outside the walls were safe and didn't even need protection. This guy was mining all alone out here. The castle age is fairly uneventful when you're just hunkering down and pretending to ignore the world. And I felt it was time to move on to the fourth and final age. Imperial Age! Anyone with half a brain and a tiny bit of Age of Empires knowledge would have already worked out what I was attempting to do. But for those who don't, it was a wonder. I'm building a wonder. <gasps> if a player can build a wonder and protect it for over a hundred years, that counts as a win. Apparently it's 350 years. I swear when I first started playing it was 100. But anyway, 350. Victory! It requires a lot of resources, however, including manpower. But I have been stockpiling resources specifically for this moment. So other than a few more villagers, it was all systems go on the wonder. The wonder takes a lot of villagers to build it, but teamwork makes the dream works. That's why there's a lot of names at the end of Shrek. The Wonder, as well as being very resource heavy, it's also very time heavy. Building the Wonder takes ages. And even after it's built, there's still 100 years before victory. All we could do was wait. Some people often kill off their excess villagers once the Wonder is complete. But no man is left behind here. Forget about that other guy. I had my excess villagers build extra stuff, then had them farming and mining and other activities. I used this time just to mess with my neighbours, like building random castles next to them and discovering my new favourite unit, the missionary. He was similar to the monk. He could heal and convert units, but he rode a donkey! He couldn't pick up the relic though. After discovering they could convert units, I created a bunch of them and did some research and got them converting enemy units and buildings. Go! Spread Catholicism! Camels, villagers, even buildings, all Catholic. They gave me an idea. However, all good things must come to an end and our victory was inevitable and soon came quickly. I checked our stats, and obviously we had steamrolled everyone and everything, and even checked the map. Hey, my scout! I thought you had died! This is a very basic way of winning. However, a win is a win, and I don't claim to be the best. Just the blast. This is a good starting winning point in my opinion. It's the tactic I used as a kid when I was first starting to play this game, and in my opinion, it's a solid way of winning, just to get you involved in the game. Wins are always good when starting off a new game like this. If you want to get better at the game, start with the wonder and then build your way up learning how to fight with other units. Which brings us on to our next strategy.
this strategy requires actual aggression, so it can be a little scary, but you're going to overwhelm them. It'll be fine. It needs this specific map as well. The map in question needed for this strategy allows ground units to walk across it, but side by side to a big galleon. Don't question it. Age of Empires has a rock, paper, scissors style of combat, i.e. siege weapons are strong against buildings, militia are strong against siege weapons, and so on and so forth. But I don't have time to remember that kind of thing. Learning new things means something old gets pushed out. I'm sure somebody in the comments will tell me otherwise. As said before, this is not a tutorial, this is just how I win. We begin this round as the Franks. You know the drill at this point. Dark Ages, Feudal Ages, Castle Ages, Imperial Ages. So I won't get into the specifics of each individual age this time. Spawning in, I did the usual thing a player would do at the start of any game. Send scouts off to scout. I forgot about auto scout this time. Let villagers gather the resources we needed and build the usual buildings we needed. Wood was our most valuable resource this time, and fortunately, we were surrounded by it. At first, I thought lumber stations couldn't be built on the water. But at some point, I spotted that the AI had been making me look bad. I hated my neighbours, the purples. They had organised their farms so neat and nicely, and their buildings were just so cute. How dare they? I hadn't learnt my lesson from last time, so I built an outpost to spy on them. This messed with their villagers. Eventually, they snapped out of it and stabbed my villager. Rude. They kept wanting to mine in my bay, but the fleet I had started building was taking swift care of that. I advanced to the feudal age, and of course, everybody else had to. At one point, the purples decided to launch an attack probably in revenge of building the outpost. At one point we tried to build a guard tower, but their villagers were having none of it. I thought I'd be okay, because I had boat units, but the purple simply walked further inland, rendering the boat units useless. A flaw in my plan. So in revenge, I went on the attack. They were my first enemies. It was war. Boats, siege weapons, couple of knights, I attacked them with everything I had. They had nothing left. I destroyed every building they had because I had missed their message of defeat. Turns out they had surrendered before I'd even begun the attack, so that's pretty awkward. From then on, it was a full out attack to everybody. I followed the same formula with each enemy. Wipe out as many units as possible with my boats. Destroy as many buildings as possible with my boats. Destroy as many buildings the boats couldn't reach. Protecting them with my boats. Then build on their islands to make more boats. Some tried to oppose me, but fell swiftly to my boats. I kept this going until everyone was wiped out but me. A not particularly noble victory, but a victory all the same. Plus, it's fun to have so many strong units destroy an entire nation. By the way, for those curious, there was a tiger in the middle of the map. Age of Empires can seem like a daunting franchise. Like most franchises can be. I know the campaigns are. It all comes down to how you play. You are overwhelmed then I hope these methods will tempt you in for some enjoyable gameplay and maybe even inspire you to make your own gameplay ideas. Shout out to all my new subscribers, you've really helped out to all my real life victories. If you too would like to help out with my real life victories, why not like and subscribe as well? But for now, I need to go to McDonald's. Goodbye!
Hello. <laughs> oh my God, it's just me saying hello. 